Hello, everybody. How you guys are doing today? So um, today we're going to just spend some time to talk about corn and um, let's grow corn together. So again, we are um, Fernando Jackson with uh, Flint River Fresh, um, executive director, also known as Farmer Fredo. And we do these workshops just to go a little bit more in depth and um, crop related information to make it uh, more accessible for you as a backyard gardener, school gardener, community gardener, urban farmer or market farmer, just to make it easier for you to grow food to feed yourself um, and other individuals, your families, um, your community at large. So today we're just gonna talk about corn. Um, corn we know is a, is, a, is a staple in most communities, but just has a little bit of background information. So corn, as we know it today, began humbly um, found as wild grass in Mexico over like 10,000 years ago. They're very small kernels, um, hard casings, and over the century, it spread across the globe. Um, corn has been domesticated uh, by the 15th century, was a major European uh, food source. And as we know it here in the United States, um, corn, uh, we have a region of our country known as a Corn Belt. Um, it is one of the most fertile places on earth to grow corn. Over 10 billion bushels of corn a year comes from the Midwestern states of Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Eastern Nebraska, and Eastern Kansas. Corn thrives in this area of the country because of the region is flat. The soil is very deep and rich in important nutrients like nitrogen. Corn is a summer crop that loves hot days and warm nights in the Midwest. So a little bit of background, there are four different types of corns. I um, know that's shocking to some people, but there are four different types that we, that when we're talking about corn, that we try to get into the ground. So one, popcorn. As the name suggests, popcorn is the type of corn that has a hard, shiny kernel that when heated would burst. Corn, popcorn needs to be dried in the husk in the garden for as long as possible. So you're really not harvesting this corn until it's literally just dried out uh, for you to basically scrape uh, for making popcorn. Then you have flint. Flint corn, com commonly known as Indian corn, has a hard dry kernel and is mainly used to make animal feed, grits, and flowers. Very or or ornamental and some varieties can also be used as um, popcorn. Then we have dent corn. Dent corn is known as such because of the small indentions in the kernel's crown. It has high starch content. It is grown to use as ethanol, sweetener, grain, animal feed, grits, flour, and etc. And the last one is the one that we use mostly in our community garden plots, which is sweet corn. Um, again, sweet corn is normally what you see in your grocery stores and at dinner tables with the high sugar content. Sweet corn is harvested at the milk stage and the kernel, and the kernel stay tender and juicy when cooked. So in our community garden plots, we like to grow um, different varieties of corn, but we really kind of stay um, true to the maturity date for us. Um, so what we're looking at is most corns we tend to plant in our garden plots, we want them to be ready for harvesting within about 70 to about 80 days out there uh, from seed to table. And so some of the varieties that we grow are, are Tentris and Ambrosia and Peaches and Cream. All three of those are bicolor corn. Um, they're similar to what you see on the screen. We have a little bit of yellow um, and a little bit of white kind of sprinkled throughout the corn. We also grow varieties called Incredible and Honey Select. These are strictly all yellow corns. And of course, we grow Silver Queen, which is my personal favorite of uh, a white corn, as well as Silver King. And a lot of these different varieties are, uh, are um, hybrid varieties. Uh, we do a lot of those with our, our community plots. And mainly it's just really because of the disease packaging. Um, and it's able to withstand um, different disease pressure and humidity that we have to deal with here. Um, in Southwest Georgia when it comes to like planting uh, corn. So when is, when is the right time to plant corn? So corn itself is a warm season crop. Um, it is something that you do not start indoors like through transplants. It's literally direct seeded um, seed to the soil. 
Um, you want to begin planting your corn two to three weeks after the last frost date. But most importantly, you want to plant corn when your soil temperature is at least 60 to 65 degrees. And so, as I said before, we like for our corn to basically go from seed to table or from farm to fork uh, within like 70 to 80 days. But as you see, different varieties of corn, um, the windows are a little bit longer. And then here for the fall, um, the season that we're in, um, our window for planting sweet corn, we try to get them in the ground between um, July 20th and August the 7th. And that's just so that they have enough time to grow out, um, kernels are filled, and it's before any frost, the possibility of any frost can happen in our area because corn cannot stand um, the cold temperatures. So one of the basic things that we remind people about corn, it is pollinated, but it's actually pollinated through the wind. And that's why we really encourage um, people to plant corn like in blocks of at least um, five rows um, to allow for the wind, um, the crossing for the plow, for the corn. And then also we encourage people to plant corn in isolation. So as I named earlier, we do like different varieties like our yellows, our bicolors and our whites, but we literally plant them in different plots um, around our garden spaces. Or if we, if we have a one plot in particular, we'll make it all the same variety um, so, because it does very easily cross um, pollination because of the wind, uh, but we do not recommend um, growing corn in containers. And when we mean by containers, we're talking like, you know, your, um, your whiskey barrels, your five gallon buckets and things like that. Um, that's just because, again, we say it needs at least a minimum of five rows, but it can work if you're looking at growing corn in raised garden beds. And literally, you're just having like three to um, five rows, three rows that might be, you know, eight feet long and it's more than enough um, corn in that space uh, for you to be able like to grow and to pollinate and have a decent harvest. And again, we recommend that, especially our school gardens to showcase to young people, um, just a different variety of things that can grow during like a growing season. Um, but you will have like a small harvest, like it really, um, again, you only get maybe like two ears of corn per stalk that grows up. So you kind of can do the math to figure out like how many that you will have to share with your community and with your family and things like that. But we do suggest that you can grow it in a raised bed in addition to our in-ground garden plots. And so how much corn do you need? So just do like some basic sort of math. Um, so if you're doing corn, sweet corn, you plant them on six inch spacing, uh, back in that your row spacing for in ground again is about 36 inches apart. If you do them in the raised beds, you can do anywhere from 18 to 24 inches. But just rough math that if you had 25, you would need 25 seeds per 10 feet of row spacing. So if you're literally doing um, a 10 by 10 plot that had three rows in it, you would need 75 seeds. Um, but if you're looking at um, doing a full uh, 100 square feet, you know, 750 seeds. So roughly, if you're looking at planting an entire acre of sweet corn, you need 32,000 um, seeds of sweet corn per acre uh, for planting. And again, this is just basic ballpark figures, of course, based upon your spacing and other things. So this, again, is just a, a, good, a good indication of like how many seeds and stuff that you would need. So if you're doing like a uh, raised garden boxes, um, you're probably needing between anywhere between 75 to 100 seeds um, if you're doing them in the raised beds, um, on and so forth. So how do you plant? So when it comes to our in-ground planting, um, so rule number one, we try to, again, is wind pollinated, but you want to have, make sure you have enough space for you to be able to walk in between um, the rows because you will need that space when it comes time for harvesting. And then also when it comes time for, um, for bug control and spraying for diseases, so have enough spacing. So we encourage you to do it on 30 to 36 um, inch spacing. Each plant should be six inches apart in the row and you want to plant them um, about one inches deep. And so the easiest thing that we find to do is just utilize like an earthway cedar or some sort of walk behind cedar. Most of them have customized plates that are already um, prefabricated uh, for planting corn. And you're literally just walking behind the cedar and it's automatically dropping the corn at the right spacing um, as well as at the right depth because you can adjust the, the devil um, for, for dropping it. But if you're doing them in the raised beds, again, we recommend the spacing be between 18 to 24 inches. Um, again, still following six inches uh, in between plants actually in the, the planting row. 
and plant it like um, one inch deep. And what we do at our garden space, we make what's called a garden stamp for our corn that literally has the spacing already pre-done uh, for the seeds. And we're literally making indentions uh, with the two by four and the stamp through the raised garden beds. And we just follow back up and plant the seed and just kind of cover them up. So one thing that you want to do with your corn um, after it's been established, uh, probably about like a week or two weeks, is you want to start hilling the corn. And um, this is done every two to three weeks. It provides extra support uh, from the corn as it's growing. It also serves as a mechanism to help with weed suppression, um, as well as um, plant support and preventing um, suckers, which are just like extra roots that kind of formulate on the, the top level, the, the up above the soil line um, in your corn. And so what we do for that, we actually use um, two tools. You can use like your basic standard um, garden rake, um, or um, we have a company that work with called Haas Tools. They make what's called a high arc wheel hoe that literally allows for us to ride over top of the corn and it basically covers, um, kicks dirt to the, the base of the plant. And we do this, the healing process, uh, to when the plant is roughly between 18 inches to two feet tall, or we like to say when the, the corn stalk gets about knee high. Um, and again, this is just something that you can do in terms of um, supporting your corn as it's growing over um, its growing season. So when it comes to irrigating our corn, um, we prefer to use either drip irrigation, um, and that's literally just putting water directly at the roots of the plant. Um, it basically allows for um, the water to be consistent with the corn, because as we find our corn does require a high volume of water, um, especially during its um, pollination phases, um, and as well as when you're filling out the, the kernels. And so by utilizing um, the drip system, we're able to put water directly um, at the roots, but then also it helps us with minimizing the amount of stress that the corn can go through. Being here in Southwest Georgia, Garden Zone um, 8B, we have droughts that really kick in and gets really, really hot and things are thriving in, in the corn and they, it definitely needs an extra amount of water. But then also what it does too, as we're healing, it is also helping us minimize the amount of weed pressure um, and things that we're dealing with because we're literally putting water directly at the base of the plant, directly at the roots. And so when it comes to watering for corn, on average, it roughly needs about one to uh, five inches of water per week as it's growing. And then once the tassels formulate, you're literally talking about two inches of water uh, per week uh, once it starts to tassel. So as just off of those numbers alone, you're really gonna be feeding and watering your corn plant like hours on end um, during this growing cycle. So just that's something to also just be mindful of like how much water you really need in order to, uh, to feed the plant. So in addition to that, your corn is a heavy feeder. And so as we tell most people for, for your in-ground garden plot, um, no matter what you're gonna do, you wanna make sure that you get a soil test. So you kind of understand like the makeup of your soil, the balancing or any um, sort of macro or micronutrients that you need to add to it as you're growing. So this is just something that we encourage everyone to do when you're about to be, begin farming, begin gardening, just know what your soil makeup is. And then a week or two before um, planting, this is when you've cleaned out your garden beds, your garden spaces, uh, we encourage you to mix in about two cups uh, per row of organic or complete organic fertilizer. Again, the same company that makes the wheel hoe, um, Haas Tools, they also have a complete fertilizer that we like to use. That's a combination of um, chicken manure pelletized that's spread out. So for every 10 feet, you wanna put two cups of fertilizer out uh, one week before planting. So you can do the math based upon your rows and how everything is laid out. But roughly every 10 feet, you wanna put like two cups of um, fertilizer um, in space. And then like a week or so after planting, you're gonna start this rotational system where utilizing the uh, fertilizer injector, which you guys see here on the picture. And basically what this does, it, it basically feeds the, the fertilizer through your drip irrigation system, utilizing um, water pressure, and it basically agitates the fertilizer and you're putting it directly again into the roots. So literally you're gonna start this cycle um, every week of feeding your plants. So one week you'll utilize your standard um, synthetic uh, fertilizer 20-20-20 and mixture it, mix it in with a couple or two of uh, micro boosts. And so for every uh, 20 feet of row, 
that you're using, you're going to basically add one cup of 202020 and one cup of uh, micro boost uh, into your fertilizer injector. So if you're doing like a 30 foot rows, 70 feet rows, on and so forth, you can kind of just add up the amount of rows that you're growing of corn and basically add that amount in terms of cups into the mix. And then the following week, the alternating week, you want to do um, two cups of Chilean nitrate as well as two cups of the micro boost mixed in for again for every 20 feet. And so again, just doing the math, you're going to basically do this cycle up until you start to see the tassels um, start to appear on your corn as it's developing. And again, corn is a heavy feeder. So this is just something you want to do in order to, to make sure you have like a good crop, a good harvest. But again, once the tassels start, you're going to start fertilizing. And it's literally just going to be all about just watering um, the crop and making sure that the kernels actually fill out. Now, if you're doing them in a raised bed, you're going to follow like the same sort of pattern of alternating week by week um, what you're putting into the, the garden space. But I bet you what you're going to do is actually alternate between uh, complete fertilizer as well as utilize what we call like the Dr. Joe bubbles, which are just like capsules that you literally put into your, your dram or your, your um, garden um, watering can. And then you're literally just drenching um, by the roots of the plants like this um, combination mix. So one week you would side dress um, it with like a, a cup. Uh, you know, the organic fertilizer, again, before it gets planting, then two weeks after planting, you're just adding um, this fertilizer complete mix. And then you alternate between the granular and the Dr. Joe liquid form like every other week into your garden space. So, again, this is just a capsule that you're literally just dropping in and mixing in with water. And uh, roughly each bed, you're just putting in uh, one to two gallons of, of this mixture um, into your bed as you're spraying it, uh, spreading it. And then, of course, like I said, is that once we've hit the tassels and started growing, you want to discontinue fertilizing your plant, um, but you want to make sure that you're still keeping up the consistent watering that's needed uh, as things grow. So when it comes to pests, of course, like our, our biggest pest that we deal with a lot is just your, your corn earworm. Um, it gets into it, it, it eats up um, the kernels and it creates like this, uh, this mushiness. But it's really actually in some ways pretty easy to tame, but you literally have to be on top of it um, as your corn is starting to tassel. And so, so with that, um, we, we encourage people that just put a little bit of mineral oil once you start to see the silk um, again, like to, to formulate on the, the ears of the corn. And basically what this does is just suffocate the larva and uh, pretty much just kills it off. And then also when you are spraying, you want to spray uh, from the top of the corn and allow for it just to, to drizzle down and it kind of gets in between um, the cracks and things like that, whether you're the female or the corn itself and actually they're growing out of. And that's just a better, another way to kind of control like your pest. So you're not really spraying leaf by leaf. You're basically spraying like from the top tassel and allow for it like the, like the trickle down and rain down in between the, the, the leaves and things that are there on your, or, on your um, plant, on your corn plant. So some of the basic tools that we use with a time for, for, for pest control, all these are organically certified. If you look up there, you see like they have the, the armory listed and things like that. So they're basically um, water, they're concentrated and you're literally just adding it to um, your, your gallon sprayer. Uh, for a lot of our sites, we're either using like a two gallon um, sprayer or we're using like a three to four gallon backpack sprayer to kind of go through and just spray for different like pests. And so what's listed here are your common pests that you deal with uh, with corn. So we use like our garden insect spray, uh, which really helps in terms of like our corn leaf aphids, our, um, our corn earworm and our stink bugs. Um, we use the um, takedown garden spray. Again, them for like our corn leaf aphids, flea beetles, um, stink bugs, corn borers. Um, and last, what we like to use is the Bug Buster O. Um, again, dealing with the corn leaf aphids, flea beetles, um, white flies, and corn earworm. And we do, sometimes we do like a cocktail where we might mix a, a, a certain percentage of each one. But whenever it comes to like your pest control, you really want to make sure that you follow the instructions that are given to you for the packaging. And don't try to think in terms like, hey, if I, if I double this up, Inside my gallon sprayer is going to do like double the work. Um, actually, in some ways, you, you, you could be hurting your harvest by with that sort of mentality. So make sure that you follow the instructions that are given 
um, for the for the for, by the uh, the label and things like that on the packaging. And then also when it does come in terms of spraying, we kind of recommend that you spray um, in the cool of the day. I'm um, in the evening versus trying to spray like early, um, early in the morning or the middle of the day. And if that has a lot to do with like our beneficial insects and also like some of the heat um, can burn like your plants and things like that. So we oftentimes encourage people to um, spray um, during the evening, the evening parts of the day and the sun is starting to set. And then in terms of disease control, we really don't have a lot of disease pressure when it comes to our corn. Um, but if we do have any, we like to use like a complete um, disease control fertilizer, um, like you see right here, that, that basically deals with our main three that we deal with a lot in corn, which is common rust, gray leaf spot, and our um, base is sort of black. Um, so again, we don't really have like a lot of disease pressure, but this is just something that we utilize that really helps us with um, keeping a harvest of things looking, you know, nice and green as people are coming through the community space to, to feed themselves or to, to pick up things for their family. And then when it's time to harvest, um, there's an the old fashioned way where we literally just pull back the, the, the husk and uh, we take our fingernail and we just like pinch the kernels. If we see like a little milky substance comes out, then we know like a little white color liquid, then we know the corn is, is ready. But then also you can just kind of look at the silk. Um, so if the silk starts to get, get um, brown, there's no green left um, near the top of the ears of corn. That we know it, that we know it's ready. Then also we just fill it too, making sure that the top ears have filled out. Um, we like to harvest our corn early in the morning. Um, you know, rather than letting it go through like the heat of the day, just kind of get it as it's kind of have like the moisture. The kernels are really full, and it's really easy to harvest corn. You're literally just doing like a, a pull down and twist. So like just pulling the ears down, twisting the corner, they like snap off, and it's ready for you to start to pass out to your neighborhood. Some people like to like to trim it to make it more pretty, but I, I found that people that want to eat corn, they're ready. And then also with the corn, it can store very well, like your refrigerator from the uh, from harvesting, you know, about like seven days or seven to 10 days in your refrigerator, no problem. Um, you can go ahead and, and um, check it to make some cream corn and freeze it um, right away and store it to your freezer for later dates and things like that as well. So it does have a really good um, like shelf life in terms of once you get it to freeze it or um, make, um, make again, make cream corn and stuff like that out of it. Um, so it's just up to you what's your preference to really hold for like the corn itself. So again, this was just like our basic sort of talk about less growing um, sweet corn. We're going to do more of these type of things to give you just a little bit more in-depth um, information on particular crops that we grow in our community garden spaces. So again, if you're trying to find us uh, for Flint River Fresh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. And if you're trying to make a more direct contact, um, you can reach us in the office uh, at 229-352-6591. Or you can send us an email, or if you're looking for other workshops and events that we're doing in the community, um, please follow us uh, through on social media. But then you also can, of course, like go to us uh, at um, our website and things like that. So again, this concludes this uh, workshop that we're doing today. We really do appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to learn and, and let's grow. So again, I'm Fernando Jackson. Uh, Farmer Fredo, Executive Director for Flintborough Refresh, and we look forward to um, growing with you in our community. You guys take it easy now. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. How you guys are doing today? So